This is episode 57 of This Makes Me Happy. This week, we're giving away a copy of Stefan Sagmeister's The Happy Film. To enter, go to iTunes and leave an honest review. Then shoot us an email at hello at thehappypodcast.com with the subject Happy Giveaway and include a screen grab of your review or let us know your username and when you post it. And we will choose a winner by Friday the 28th in the afternoon. Welcome to This Makes Me Happy, a podcast about people and what makes them happy. I'm your host, Bernardo Margulis. I'm a designer, art director, and educator, and I'm the principal of This Makes Me Happy, a design studio where I help my clients with branding and visual communications. I'm very happy to present This Makes Me Happy, the podcast, where each week I chat with a different person about what makes them happy. My guests come from all walks of life, and each of them shares their own personal happy stories. Join us every week for any conversation. Hello. Today, I am very excited to be talking with David Markovich. David is the founder of Online Geniuses. How are you doing, David? Good. How's everything about you, Bernardo? Pretty good. And I'm pretty excited to be talking with you. Special. We had a great chat last week. So I'm pumped up to hear about what you have to share with us. But before we move on, is there anything you want people to know about you? Uh, I'm one of six kids. I was born in New York. So it, ma- it matters who you're talking to, but six kids either sounds a lot or a little. It matters to the demographic. I'm also day three of doing the Whole30. I'm not sure if you're familiar with Whole30. I am, but if you want to tell us a little bit, because probably not everyone is. Uh, essentially, the Whole30 diet, uh, Whole30 diet is 30 days of just eating whole food. Um, that means no sugar, uh, no grains, no legumes, so beans, um, lentils, anything of that sort, no soy, and no dairy. So just like pure whole foods and the benefits like are are pretty amazing from for doing that. You can tell just after three days you can see it? No, because I actually been um, paleo for the past year. Okay. Now, like this is the most extreme I've ever went, but I know how it feels because I know for the first like 60 days of doing paleo, I was essentially doing uh, what the whole 30 is. So I, I know the benefits and that's the reason why like I went back into it like three days ago and... I'm doing it with like two other people. So it's like interesting because we have like a WhatsApp group and it's like much harder for them because this is like the first time that they're trying something like this. And this is kind of like ingrained in my mindset already. So it's it's pretty interesting. So you conveniently started the day after July 4th so you can have your 4th of July celebrations. Hey, you know, it's funny. Okay, so I'll actually share why I started it. So I have not in the past year ate, sh- ate any sugar. Um, 4th of July... I went out a lot. I was eating a lot of barbecues and barbecues are ideal for eating in this lifestyle. I like I was drinking we were with friends. I was like a little bit worn out and there was like this chocolate covered like popcorn and everyone was like getting so hyped about it. And I decided to like eat a little bit and I realized like, hey, like the way I'm eating now is like going to head on a, a downward path. So I'm like, let me try to jump back into the whole, you know, the whole 30 <laughs> lifestyle. I'll be curious to hear when you're done with it, how, how it wraps up. But let's take this chance to shift over to the main topic. David, I'm very curious to hear what makes you happy. Well, I, I, know, you asked, I know you asked me this um, on our call. I mean, you didn't ask me. You just told me, hey, like we're going to do a podcast. and I'm, I'm going to ask you one question. And I was like, oh, that's simple. Because usually I'm asked like 10 to 15 questions. And each one is more complicated than the next. So the one question, and then I realized it's one of the hardest questions to answer. It like ties in with like self-awareness, like what you think makes you happy, what you want to make you happy, and what really does make you happy. So first, I was going to give you the answer is information. Like information makes me really happy. Like that, I spend all day like trying to figure out like new things that are coming out, new industries. I read a lot. I watch documentaries. I when somebody has a career that. I've never uh, encountered before. I would love to learn more about it, like in the most, (laughs) as much as they would like to share. So like that was going to be my, my first answer. I was like, you know, that actually, that's like actually what makes me feel super content. Like at the end of a long day or a real um, long period of work or, um, you know, just unwind, like I like to just read and learn and so on and so forth. But then I realized, like, I don't think that's what, like, would be my answer that would make me really happy. Because I realized, like, just even throughout July 4th and even um, 
some other things that came to mind, I think the answer is what makes me happy is people, all different shapes and sizes. What does that mean? Is that, is that just straight up people in general or, or is there a deeper meaning on how people make you happy? So I don't know if you ever heard like emotions are contagious. Yeah. So like if you're, I'm, and I'm not talking about like all people, right? Obviously all people are not going to make you happy, but certain people will make you extremely happy, even if you just meet them and you connect. If they're really happy, you'll kind of feed off of that, right? I call it like invisible energy. So if I'm hanging around with entrepreneurs that are killing it, I just get that motivation. And like internally, it's just like if someone just filled you up with like this energy that's going to help you succeed. Um, it works as the opposite as well. But like that's for a different conversation about like how to find out who to hang out with and so on and so forth. But um so when I'm with people that are really happy, when I'm with people that are really content when, or accomplishing their goals uh, or succeeding in a certain area, like I tend that actually gets me really happy because I can feed off other people's emotions. So tell me, tell me a little more about uh, that you have invisible energy. How did you come up with this term and, and what does that mean for you? What does it mean for me? It means for me that like if you hang around like – that's what I do, right? That's what I do for a living. I, I'm always working with people and I always have worked with people, even digitally. Like there's never a point where like I, I was we, I was reading something on Reddit and he, this, this guy was writing that I sleep with a gun near my bed that just in case someone breaks in, I, get, I could shoot myself so I don't have to actually see someone face to face, see a real person, you know? Like some people are just like they do not want to affiliate or – speak to people and especially in my field right in technology and marketing like we tend to like um like the technical marketers they tend not to want to work with people um they you know they rather be doing their tasks or, or something of, of that sort i i like put myself out there to to go you know meet people and find new energy and find other uh, ideas like that's what gets me going and like giving to people really helps me also you know so like you're, you're giving, you feel good about yourself. Sometimes it feels even better than taking, if that makes sense, Bernardo. Absolutely. So you're, you're talking about two different things. You're talking about people's energies and you're talking about giving to people. Are these two sides of the same coin or are they two different activities that just interrelate to each other? So, so the parent of this conversation is people, right? Now, what you do with people, you hang out, you give, you take, you spend time with, you work together, right? It, it's a pretty broad subject, maybe one of the broadest subjects ever, right? Is people. So it, it, I think just in general, like when I'm, when I'm with, it's just when I'm with good people, transparent, good, nice, creative people, then I tend to feel really happy. The same goes with opposite. If like I haven't been around people or if I'm stuck working for like on a binge for like two weeks or something and I haven't really got to communicate with people that I enjoy or, or could get that like invisible energy, then I, then the opposite will happen. Like I can feel a, like a physical difference. Now, it's interesting because you, you said earlier that people in the digital world don't necessarily want to jar with people, um, but you've created communities and you've created and i'm gonna i want you to if you want to explain briefly what online geniuses is i'm gonna ask you again later but you're creating communities you're creating opportunities for people to interact with each other um so what moved you to say or did you consciously say hey i'm in this digital world but i want to reach out and i want to have other people reach out yeah um so online geniuses is essentially a community for digital marketers uh i think we're like creeping on twenty thousand members in Essentially, almost every every major city we have people, and we throw events in twenty five cities. It's it's very hard to go to an event when you don't know anyone there. Like if you're just solo going, even though like you might have like um, you might have something in common, like business, or it's like a birthday, or some type of celebration, and like you don't maybe the person that you know didn't show up, or you just have to roll with yourself. It's it's pretty hard. What we what I did is like what we have is an online community. So like we we meet online and we learn a lot about each other online. And then it's like much easier for us to meet in person, right? Because like, oh, hey, I know you. Your username is Funky Hat, and it's like, oh yeah, you're David. I'm like, cool. What's up? You know, like, it's a much easier way to break the ice with people that are not would normally wouldn't go to like events like that. Why do you think people have an easier time 
meeting online and then transferring that in person rather than in person? I think re- it's easier to get rejected online mm. um, than getting rejected in person. For example, like somebody doesn't open your email, it might hurt a little bit. But if somebody, if you go up to someone and say, hey, my name is John, and they just turn away and walk away from you, that's like, <laughs> that's probably way more hurtful. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's like all the internet trolls that they don't think yeah, twice because they're behind like, screen. Yeah. Like if somebody ignores you on, uh, or somebody like they, the chemistry is not working online, it's like, okay, cool. In our online community, we have thousands of people. So it's like, oh, somebody's not a fit. Not everyone's going to be a fit. The same thing I told you about your podcast. I said 50% of people you meet are going to have no interest. 50% are, right? So like, go find the people that are going to be interested and ignore all the, the former ones, you know? Yeah. So so how does it work? Do you, Have you ever noticed anything interesting in that translation from digital to physical? I think people are more... Um, there's more accountability. So people are, are probably are better people. Um, it's like what Uber did, you know, in a, in a yellow cab, you would in New York City, you would lie there drunk and whatever, kicking the door. I don't know, whatever people did in yellow cabs. And now in Uber, you're like, wait, <laughs> they have my information. They I'm, I might see this person again. They could rate me. You know, there's like more accountability. So you're going to act like a, a nicer human being. So we at, at events we meet. Do we, people are more welcoming and, and I'm not saying they're naturally bad people. I'm just saying like, Hey, you're going to probably see this person again, or, you know, there's, they, they probably know someone else that, you know, cause you guys are all part of the same community. Um, so it's easier to go into an event that you then uh, uh, going into an event with people that you've met online and communicating with them and, and the people that you know who you hit it off with then rather than go to another event that you have no idea who's going to be there, what, what the energy is there, uh, how the feeling is, and, and so on and so forth. Now, in your personal life, how does the digital world work with the physical world? Do you feel equally connected with people digitally as you do in real life? I personally really do. Um, I, I consider people that I've never met um, in, in real life good friends. I had business partners that I've never met that we made money together. I have people I chat with all the time that I've never met. And like, for me, it's almost like when we meet, it would, nothing will change. Like it, there's no, you know, for me, it's almost the same. I don't know if that's for all people, but I, I, I think I'm intuitive enough to realize like, you know, who's good for me, um, whether they're in front of my face or they're texting with me on digital. And are you able to get that uh, invisible energy from them, even if you've never interacted in person? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Now, earlier you were also saying that it's not all people that make you happy. There's a certain kind of people. Um, what happens with the opposite? What happens when someone who's not positive or with good energy is around you? How do you behave? How do you handle that? It, people don't realize it will bring you down even if you don't realize it might subconscious it might bring you down subconsciously even weeks later if you're hanging out with negative people like it's that rule right like the five people that you hang around with the most you know equal out their how much they're gonna make or equal out how nice they are or whatever that's basically you right average out whatever they are. If you, if you hang out with bad people, they, there's people that give energy and there's people that take energy, mm. right? What I'm talking about is receiving energy. If you, you could get people that will take your, that will take your energy. If that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. So do you, do you anything to avoid them or is it just unavoidable and you have to learn to live with it? So luckily, lucky enough, I don't really come across that many people that, that I feel that way about. Um, you do obviously come across um, negative people or people that are just naturally want to take. They don't want to give. They don't want to build a relationship. They're trying to see what they could get. They, those people lose in the long run anyway. Right? Yeah. Like, like, they, like, they might, in the short run, they might get a lot more stuff than a giver. But in the long run, years down the line, they're usually um, in last place. But luckily enough that in my life, I'm able to choose, you know, who I can hang out with, um, what, um, you know, what I have to offer. 
and if I give where I can unconditionally or, you know, where we're nothing in return, just purely just give. And, you know, when it's my turn to take or if I need to pick me up or, or something of that sort, then I could get that also. Is there anyone specifically or a, a, a certain kind of people that you seek out when you're not feeling happy or when you're having a down moment? It's funny they mention that because when I'm really down, I don't want to speak to anyone. I think a lot of people feel that way, right? So there's there's one aspect is like, hey, I don't want to be, <laughs> I don't want to be the, the that negative person, right? Taking all this invisible energy. But I also, you know, you're just not motivated to, uh, you know, to hang out. Yeah. Um, but it, it really, so, so then what I started doing is like, if I get really down, if I'm in a bad place, then you try to figure out like, what is, what is causing that? And there's usually people that you could find that have unfortunately been down that path and they could guide you out. And there's and so in in almost all areas of life. So for whatever finding those people like a different is a different podcast all of its own. But basically, yeah. if you're you know, uh, I have a friend who's like a a professor in psychology who like we hang out with a lot. Um, and he, you know, he's really great to hang out if you're not feeling well that way. You know, so. And, and that's not the reason why you should be. That's not, that's not the reason why you should be building relationships. You shouldn't be like pull up an Excel sheet and realize, hey, oh, this is how I'm feeling, or this is what I need. That, like it's not how. And I know it's like come, it's kind of coming off that way. And and I really and I apologize for anyone listening. Um, watch nobody picks up my call in like a week. Thanks, Bernard. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> you couldn't just do a podcast about marketing like everyone else. Um, <laughs> we can talk about marketing and why marketing makes you happy. <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah. So basically, yeah. It, if, you know, when you're down, you try to hang out with good people to pick you up. It's it's usually the good friends that that always have your back. Now the opposite. When you're filling up and you want to share that positive energy, is there anyone specific you like to do that with, or any kind of people you like to do that with? You definitely want to do it with the please, you know, the the people that you're close with, because you, you could get you could build people up too. Like when people are down, you could help them up too. Like me and my girlfriend kind of work this way. When we're both pumped, we feed off each other and motivate each other and like push it back and forth. When one of us are down, like the other one's like, hey, by the way, let's go. You got this. And like that, that's like the best person, right? Because significant the significant other that knows all and is there for all, and which is like irreplaceable and you can't exchange anything for that. But yeah, you, you want to, like, you want to hang out with good people. So I, you know, hang out with my friends, people I work with, you know? See, now they're going to pick up your call. Now yeah. Because gonna- <laughs> yeah. you want to we'll share the joy. Life's too short. Like everyone, like you, you overthinking and, you know, like try to be happy and try to make people happy. That's why I, I that's why I, I really like your podcast. Um, I listened to it before we chatted and I was like, oh, wow, like this is really, really a good point. Like it's there, there's so many you want to hear something. There's so many books about happiness. There's so many um, try go to Google and type in how to be happy. Go read Quora, go read Reddit, go read Medium, go read even long posts on LinkedIn. Right. Everyone has the answer. The answer is that nobody has the answer. Because you have to find it in yourself. That's why I like your podcast. It's like you realize because you could put out you, – you could probably put out a graph at the end of your podcast and be like, hey, what actually out of like the, the – all the people I interviewed, this is what makes most of my people happy. It's Everyone has a different answer. I can't remember if I said it last week when we chatted, but – at first, I was trying to get experts to talk about what makes people happy and how we can become happier. And it's what you're saying. It's like everyone has their own happiness. And even though there are proven things that can make other people happy, I'm more interested in the individual and the this, and this stories and, and what makes you, David, happy, And no matter what psychology says. Um, yeah, and, and I agree with that. Um, like there's very few things that are scientifically proven to make you happy. I, actually, speaking of – the whole 30 back to the way I'm eating, they say that um, when your blood sugar is stable, you're, you're like naturally happier. Like there's certain things that scientifically say, but overall, like if someone came to me and says how to be happy, I would have no idea what to say. 
Mm. Like I would you figure out like, Hey, what are you passionate about? Go do that. Or, you know, try to, you know, let's, let's figure you know, try to figure it out for yourself. It's like nothing that can be taught. Yeah. There, there, well, one of the theories that I like a lot says that happiness is half, um, genetic. It's 10% circumstantial and it's 40% controllable. And it's that 40 control, 40%, like you're saying the blood sugar, that's more genetic and you can control that and you can affect it. But we, we can only really manipulate 40% of our happiness. So why not make the best we can and control those things to make ourselves happier? Yeah, I agree. Um, I, I, I am a big believer that it, a lot of it's genetic. It doesn't mean you should give up. You're like, hey, everyone in my family is sad. Like, I'm going to probably be sad. Like, like you said, I didn't know. I didn't know those numbers. I'm not going to forget them either. But you said 40% is is controllable, and I think that's a big um, that's a big percentage. Yeah, and we get lost in that ten on that 50% or that, you know. 10% that we can control. It's like, all right, let's, let's be happier. Let's be happier people. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that's, it, it's a lifetime. It's one of those jobs you do for the rest of your life. You know, yeah. it's not something you can figure out. It's not like getting a car. It's not like buying an apartment. You got to spend your whole life trying to figure out like where you find the place. That's why I can't stand when people are like born and they're put into a box and they're like this, like they're, they're following everything that they've ever, like, and they're unhappy and they're asking people, Hey, why am I unhappy? He's like, go explore, go like figure out who you are. And I think that's like my, the first step. And that's actually how I became happier as a person too. Like just trying a lot of different things um, in a lot of different industries and in a lot of different areas to live. So why don't you tell us a little bit about that? What, what was your process like and why did you decide to explore all those things? Or was it just unconscious that you were exploring? I'm a, I'm a natural, I'm a natural, very curious person. I, I like people. So I hang out, I hang around with a lot of different people, a lot of different cultures um, in a lot of different areas. And I think that um, you learn a lot from all cultures. I, I remember hearing somebody that he's like, whenever I have an idea for a startup, Whenever I don't have any ideas to, to make a business, I go to different cultures and I see what they're doing and I usually can find the problem that I could fix mm. or like bring back something that they solved and bring it here and monetize, you know, something of that sort. So like I'm, I'm consistently searching, you know, I'm always like reading um, you know, we, like uh, different things, um, we, like ways to eat, ways to live, like even what temperature works when you sleep you know like what well, what's the best temperature you should sleep in what's the what's the water temperature that you should drink how long should your showers be like all these things have answers of people or science that figured it out you know and if you could optimize your life and make it a little bit better you that's i guess that's the controlling the happiness portion that you were mentioning you know so is this uh have you found answers yet or are you still exploring how, how does that go if I found the answers to everything, I wouldn't be uh, <laughs> to your unhappiness. Anything else besides selling books <laughs> to your unhappiness. <laughs> oh, to mine? Yeah, I don't think anyone would buy that book. <laughs> there would be there would be like one book, and, and my mom would be ask me to sign it. You know, like, <laughs> well, um, she's a good Jewish mother, so of course she's going to ask you to sign it. Yeah, yeah, and then she's going to ask if she get a discount. No. <laughs> You're not giving your mother a book for free. Not not this time around. Not if I'm only selling one copy. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I think it's just it's still it's still a work in progress. But it, it, every like every quarter it gets better. Yeah. It's funny you're saying quarter. Like, it, it, are you measuring the way you measure online marketing? Are you measuring quarter by quarter? I don't know. I, I choose to measure things by quarter for some reason. I, I totally I don't I totally didn't realize how strange it sounded until I said that. <laughs> Um, because I think a year is too, like, is too broad to me. Like, oh, this year was a good year. This year was a bad year. You know, like that's too much. So you could say like overall, like, Hey, the past three months, um, has been like a really good and I learned this and this is what I accomplished. Like I try to do goals in quarters. Mm -hmm. So I try to measure like how I'm feeling as well. Like it's like someone saying it's been a really good decade for, you know, like, <laughs> you, like in, in, in there it's like. Um, and like a month is too short, right? So like a month, like so much stuff, like, so I don't know. That's just my own thing. Hmm. So I want to go back to the very beginning because you said that your first answer was going to be information and then you switch it to 
people, which I feel are very, very different. Information is factual. People are more, um, let's say, mystical, for lack of a better word. Um, why do you think you initially were going to say information, and how does that compare with people? Because I think I confused like where I feel when I'm content and where do I feel like extreme enjoyment. Mm. So initially I was like, this is where I feel really content is when I'm learning or like when I find out like a really good, when I find out something new or like I learn about new industry, like that's where I feel like I, that's what I do. Like before I go to sleep to smile, you know, like that's like one of the first things I do in the morning is whip out. Like I read about the industries I'm working in and like I read about new industries and I'm constantly browsing. Um, So what is, so like that, so I think I confused. I'm like, oh yeah, like, so that's what makes me happy. Then I realized like, where do I get an extreme, where do I get like a ton of enjoyment from? Like, what can I do forever? Like, what can I do for like more than like five? I can't like, I would need a break from like reading or watching or chatting about knowledge. But I think with people, I could do it for way longer than that. Like I'm I'm going away this weekend with like some friends. So, like, I don't think I'll need time away from, like, the people I'm hanging out with. No, it's interesting because you work digitally. You work uh, online, as you said before. Um, you know, online marketers, online people tend to shy away from other people. Um, not only are you searching other people, but you have so many things going on at the same time. You have uh, business and you have your consulting and you have... Um, does it ever feel like you need to make time to hang out with people? Or is it natural to you always? No, I always, I, I, I always try. I, it, it, I obviously, it's some, it's sometimes it's so um, overwhelming in, in life that there's just so much to do that you can hang out. And, like, just, like, that's, like, my fun activity. Like, uh, I don't really have that many hobbies, so that's one of them. So, yeah, and obviously, it's, it's unfortunate when you can't do certain things, but you have to, you know, you have to live life first because you're going to feel much crappier. If, if like things in your life are falling apart, but you're hanging out with good people, you know. Uh, did you always know this? Did you always have that vision of the importance of people, or was that something you learned at some point? So I don't know. I don't. Rem- I don't remember how early on it started, but I know like my parents and relatives mentioned that I was always talkative and I was always like engaging people. So I guess it's been going on for a long time. I'm guessing with a family of six kids, you're either super social or super reclusive. Yeah, there's no middle. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah. <laughs> no, but like that's why I, I always preferred to live with roommates. Mm. I, I kind of like always lived with people. So like for me, it's like living alone is it would be more of a torture than a pleasure. Mm. So with your with the siblings, where are you? Are you oldest, youngest, middle? I'm the second the youngest. Second youngest. So I'm wondering how that, that can influence. I'm a middle child and I definitely think that it's influenced me. Um so I'm curious when you have six kids, if 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 that influences at all your outlook in life or or not. Uh, I'm not, I'm not sure. I never thought about that. I, I know there's like a lot of theories. I don't. Is there any, is there any real studies about like where you fall in your family? Where, where you fall in the like? <laughs> yeah, I've read some stuff like birth order definitely affects certain aspects. Uh, nothing set in stone, but. Um, and I can't remember because in certain certain things I follow the path, and in certain things I don't follow the the general middle child script. But yeah, they've they've done some studies that I think middle children and second children are are more independent and more social. Um, but my little sister is the most social of all of us, and the most well, almost the most independent. So I don't I don't know if, how true that is or not. We'll see. Yeah. Um it's really not that complicated of a study to do. Yeah. Like go put, put something out and say, Hey, if you're the first born click here, we want to ask you five questions, you know, <laughs> and then just do that throughout. Like it, it's not like that complex. It, it has to be in the right setting. And I think the staff involved should be experienced in the field. It's probably line up the right yeah. data to collect. But yeah, I would, I would be interested in learning it, and I would be happy to participate in something like that. Well, you can participate. It'll be probably harder, but finding families of six children, how does the second to last <laughs> affect your... <laughs> or second to youngest, not second to last. 
I know it's second to last. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> I'm second it's, to last it, too. It sounds so. like everyone's doomed. It was it was the, it was the second to last. <laughs> what happened to the last? We're going to end this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> So let's let's a little role playing, and um, if you had your ideal day, week, weekend with whoever makes you the happiest, or whoever you enjoyed the best time with, um, what would that look like? Um, I think it changes a lot because I, I try to like switch it up a lot. Like sometimes I, I enjoy going out on the weekend. Sometimes I enjoy staying in with with people. Uh, and it's, it's also um, season dependent. Mm-hmm. So, like, you're not going to want to, like, chill in the park in the middle of January. So, overall, like, going, I like, I like hosting. So, I think um, it, would be, it would be like hosting um, a really nice dinner or some type of event for my friends uh, on one of the nights. Hosting a lot, maybe going out afterwards. And then, like, taking it easy during the day and getting things done. I think that's, like, ideal. Like, I tend to host, like, a lot of, like, things for my friends and, like, when guests come. Is there anyone, either someone specific or a type of person that you would love to meet? I don't know. Did anyone say Elon Musk yet? Uh, I don't think so. Okay, good. I'll take him. How come? <laughs> I, I just, I'm, I'm so intrigued. <laughs> Like I, I don't think people are appreciating that he's gonna probably be in the history books. Like, really, like, we're, like we're living when he's here. Like, it's kind of like living during the time when Einstein was alive. Mm. Like, people are like, wow, he's creating really cool shit, you know? So, like, what he's doing is just amazing, and it's just one success after another. Some of his theories don't align with how I think, but I, with respect of that, I still would love to meet him and you know just try to dissect some information, try to understand like the way his brain works, try to emulate maybe some of the good things he has um, going for personality wise. And when people meet you, what do you hope they walk away with? A smile. Love it. I love it. Um, <laughs> My business card. No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, a bill for $10,000. Yeah. <laughs> One large invoice. No. <laughs> Okay, David, now I want to move on to the rapid fire section. And I have a few quick questions about different things that make you happy. Are you ready for it? Hey, right, let's go. Who makes you happy? Damn, I, I'm so bad at rapid fire. Um, my friends, family, and my girlfriend. What is the happiest word you can think of? I think surreal. Uh, when are you the happiest? After an accomplishment. What is the last thing you remember that made you happy? Does being on this podcast count? Absolutely. And it makes me happy. So, yes, it counts double. <laughs> um, and, yeah, my, yeah. and my favorite question to ask is, what is the first happy moment you can remember? I mean, I'm trying to think of like like the superficial ones, like where I got like gifts of bikes and stuff for the holidays or something. Um, I think when I went to Europe for the first time. How long ago was that? 15 years ago. No, like 13 years ago. And where in Europe were you? I was in Switzerland for a few months. Um, and uh, there's like a town outside Lucerne mm-hmm. uh, called Alaboni. I don't know. It was like this Italian-based town. Was that just for fun? or? It was part of like a camp program. So I want to if I wanna learn more about Online Geniuses. Um, and also, if people want to find you, where can we find you? Sounds good. If you want to find me, just go to Google and type in David Markovich. Uh, you'll find my Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, or whatever. Mm-hmm. I try to respond to all messages as long as they're not from a Uganda prince. <laughs> Misspelled uh, emails telling you you got $10,000 for free. Yeah, oh, that was so funny. I once like, called up my mom. I'm like, do we have an uncle in Nigeria who passed away? She's like, no. <laughs> I was like, I thought we were to engage in some conversation. And that was the last time we spoke. It's been years. I'm just kidding. <laughs> oh, yeah. And tell us a little bit more about Online Geniuses. What's, what's it about? And uh, tell us a little bit about the meetups. So if you're in digital marketing, we have a community. Um, it's, you apply. It's free to join as long as you're in the field. And we 
bring on guests like Gary Vaynerchuk, Rand Fishkin, Neil Patel, come in, answer questions. We have meetups in person again, again, free, um, and you'll you'll be able to connect with thousands and thousands of other people from uh, essentially almost every major company has a representative there. So if you want to join, um, you're listening to this, go to onlinegeniuses.com, apply, say you heard about it from the podcast. I'll try to add those in quicker than the ones on the waiting list. And, and you have chapters all over the world, right? You have uh, all over the yeah, U.S., yeah. you have in... Uh, yeah. I just went on the website you have in Australia, UK, Canada, Tunisia, Germany, yeah. and then all over the US. Uh, there were, the one in Philadelphia is the one I'm going to – not this month because I'm traveling, but next month I'll, I'll – Yeah, I went to the one. The Philadelphia one's great. Wherever you go, just, just follow along wherever you go. In, any, in, yeah. in most cities, you'll find someone there that you'll be able to hang out with from Online Geniuses. Yeah. And last week when we talked, I felt so proud of myself because I could drop the name Gary V and know what the hell I was talking about. And then you're like, yeah, we had him. We, we brought him to this <laughs> event. I'm like, um, yeah. <laughs> all right. You were just like, that's one way to one up. Right? <laughs> I'm like, I read his book and you're like, yeah, we'd had him at our event. <laughs> yeah. 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 We listen. I'm a, I don't care every name dropping. We have good, we have good people. Everybody like, listen, some of the most unexpected people, Good job. It could be the most helpful. You never know. Yeah. And I'll make sure that we put this link on the show notes and uh, and share all about it because there's definitely some good marketing love going on there and I want to share it. David, thank you for sharing what makes you happy. Thank you so much for having me, Bernardo. Thank you, David, for sharing what makes you happy. And thanks to Dave Feynman of episode 55 for making the connection. Thanks, everyone, for listening. And a special thanks to Jason Zapolo for ending this episode, Olga Margulis for help with social media, and Rocio Castaneda for ongoing support. You can learn more about this project and listen to past episodes at thehappypodcast.com. And you can find us on social media, on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram at The Happy Podcast and youtube.com slash thehappypodcast. Please go to iTunes and subscribe, and you will get the latest episodes on your device. And if you leave us a five-star review there, more people can find us. Thanks for listening, and I'll see you in a couple weeks.